Hello, everybody, and welcome to the latest episode of Student Dave. Yeah, I'm back on the iPad. Um, I guess it is kind of some weird, like, love-hate relationship. Like, I don't like it because it's hard to write, but I love it because there's a lot of media on it. <laughs> um, multimedia stuff on it. So maybe it's similar to, like, the Quail Ninja issues. But uh, anyways, regardless, today we're going to do work on what people have been asking for quite a bit, and that's object tracking with the common filter. So object tracking in the sense of an image. So you got some image, right? You got some image, and you're trying to follow some object. Maybe there's like a little bug in it, and like the bug is like moving around, and maybe the image gets all speckled at some point, or maybe the bug goes off the screen and the bug comes back on the screen, or it gets um, occluded by something like a rock. I don't know. And so, what a lot of people use is the common filter to track an object in two dimensions. And so, while my last tutorial was in 1D, it was following the quail as he flew around, right, while the ninja was chasing him. Um, that was kind of a one kind of one dimension of motion. It was just uh, accelerating. What we're going to do this time is we're going to follow an object in two dimensions in glorious 2D. And I'll show you how to do that. I'll show you how to do the actual tracking. So I'm going to do this kind of basic tutorial on image processing, very very basic, and then apply that tracking, um, use that tracking to then uh, get a better estimate using the common filter in two dimensions. Okay. Okay. So what is our mission? Well, our mission is to track this uh, little bug in the corner. Here's a little hex bug. He can get really big or really small. Um, and he can basically run around and we'll, the bug will run around all over the place. We'll see in the video later of how he runs and what he looks like. But our goal is to basically track this little bug running around. And maybe our tracking algorithm can track him pretty well for the most part, but we'll see how it errors in other parts. But yeah, basically our goal will be to track this little hex bug. And so the hex bug can move in um, in a couple dimensions, right? It can move in the x dimension and it can move in the y dimension, right? That's where our image is going to show. And so what we want to do is we want to apply the common filter in two dimensions. And so these two dimensions are the x and y direction. So we're going to use our standard model of motion. x of t plus 1 equals x of t plus velocity t times time plus the uh, 1 half times the acceleration times time. Right? And then we have our velocity equation, v sub t equals v sub t plus 1 equals v sub t plus the acceleration times time. Right? These are our equations in the x direction. Well, I guess we could put a subscript for the v because this is velocity in the x direction. And then so what are we going to do in order to do a two dimensions? Well, we're going to use another two set of equations, one for the y position and one for the y velocity. And that's it. We have these two equations. Um, previously, we just had this one equation for the one motion, but because now we're moving in two dimensions, we need two sets of equations for the position and the velocity. You could model also the acceleration, but we're just trying to do the velocity and position here. That'll be sufficient. Um, so what that's going to do is it's going to change our matrices a little bit. The, when we do our state update and our measurement update and all that stuff, uh, our matrices aren't going to be exactly the same. They're going to be a little bit bigger and have a couple different uh, aspects to them. And so instead of doing the full derivation like I did in the first tutorial, what I'm just going to do is kind of show you how to set up these matrices, why they're the why they are the way they are, and then do the implementation. Okay. Okay. So what were the two equations we used for our common filter? If you remember, we had our state update, right, which is equal to the prior state, a transform on the prior state, plus the input right, the, the system input, the control input, like the acceleration or something, and then we have our error in the uh, system, like basically variance in the behavior of the system. Then we had our other equation, which was our measurement update, which is of course is a function of what we expect the uh, state to be, so there's our, our state update, plus our, again our measurement error, so that would be our measurement error term. Now, like I said, in this tutorial, we're not going to do a full derivation of these. You've already seen those. What I'm just going to do is show you how to set up these different um, uh, coefficient matrices, the A, B, and C, and then also the covariance uh, matrices for the, for the, uh, for the error terms. Uh, once you know how to set those up, you basically could just re-implement what I've done before, but on an image, and you could kind of see how the system behaves. And it kind of gives you a different intuition of how the whole system works, and it gives you a quick way of applying it to um, image tracking or an object tracking in an image. Okay? So let's just look at our state uh, update equation first. So what is our states? Well, our state is no longer just x position and x velocity. It is x position, y position, x velocity, and y velocity. It is now a four-dimensional state uh, vector. 
So, of course, now our A matrices can't stay the same. It's going to become a 4 by 4 to deal with the fact that we now have these four uh, aspects to our state. And then again, it's, we have now a larger uh, control input variable because it's not just dealing with the fact that we had two, we now have four. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill in these A and B matrices so we can see what is required in order to generate the equations that will fulfill the four equations we need here in our 2D example. So it's going to be 1, 0, T, 0, 0, 1, 0, T, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Then this is going to be t squared over 2, t squared over 2, t, t. And so this is our equation. And you're, and you're like, what the heck, right? So what we, well, let's just go ahead and take a look at how this is going to work out. I'm going to multiply this by this, this by this, and we're going to add on these terms at the end. And you're going to see that basically what it does is it allows us to separate out the x and y terms. Because x position and x velocity is independent of y position and y velocity and vice versa. And so this matrices allows us to separate out those, those variables. So for example, let's look at the x. x is going to equal x times 1 is x uh, plus y position times 0, which is 0, plus 0 times the y position, plus x velocity times time plus y velocity times 0, plus t squared over 2 times a, right? And so what does that do? Well, this crosses out, and this crosses out, and we're left with just x position at time t is equal to x position at time t minus 1, plus x velocity times t minus 1, plus our acceleration term. So this matrices here allows us to separate out the variables. The same thing will be true for the y, and then just let me do out the x velocity. x velocity is going to equal to... Um, 0 times x plus 0 times y plus x velocity times 1 plus 0 times y velocity plus t times a. So again, this crosses out, this crosses out, this crosses out, and so our x velocity is equal to our prior x velocity plus the acceleration term, which is exactly the equations you want. So these two matrices generate the uh, separated equations we need for the x position, y position, x velocity, and y velocity. And so this is what we'll plug into our model, our state update model. So what's our measurement update model, right? So we had uh, z of t is equal to uh, c times, and basically this is our transformation matrices on our estimated state, uh, plus our error term. We're not doing the error term right now. So what is c? Well. We're measuring, I mean, in this case, we're measuring the motion of this little bug, right? That he seems to be moving around. <laughs> and we're measuring uh, the position of him. So while we may be modeling the, the velocity and acceleration and position, all we're recording is the position. So our C matrices isn't going to be the full matrices. It's just going to be partially full. And so in this case, C is going to equal um, zero, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. And so basically what this matrices is going to limit, um, when you multiply this based upon the state, is it's going to limit our state um, uh, measurement to just the position in the x and position in the y dimensions. That's basically all we're measuring, and so that's, you create a matrices to basically control what our measurement will be, and it'll just be limited to the x and y position, but not the velocities. Okay, so now let's get a handle on our error uh, variances. Like, what kind of error do we expect in the process, and what kind of error do we expect in the measurement? Let's do the measurement first, because that's a little bit easier. So, our error in the measurement. Well, we're only measuring two things, right? We're measuring the x position and the y position. And we said they were independent. So, if we look at the matrices for that, well, we got our x, and we got our y, we got our x, and we got our y. Basically, we're going to ignore any interaction between the two. There shouldn't be. We're defining them as independent. And so all we're going to do in this model is look at the variance in the x and the variance in the y. And we can define that however we want. Maybe it's 1, 2, whatever. But this is going to be our equation for the measurement error. Now, the error in the uh, process is a little bit more complicated because, again, we have these four equations. It's going to be a 4 by 4 matrices. But let's just think about that for a second. So we have our x term, our y term our x and y velocities. Just draw these down the side. And remember, this is error in the process, right? Error in the input to the system. And so what she's going to be using is the acceleration um, term. Now, x position is based upon t squared, right? That's t squared over 2. Same thing with y position. 
and then x velocities are uh, based upon time, and so that's the same thing for y. So it's t squared, 2 for the y, and then t. Those are what the sources of our error. And so if we're going to look at our variance, we're going to do x times x. It's going to be t over 4, t over 4, t, t to the 4th over 4. But the y term doesn't depend on x, so this will be 0. The velocity, well, t squared over 2 times t is going to be t cubed over 2, and it doesn't depend on y. You see? So basically, we're just trying to break out what types of dependencies there are for each component of the error. X's error, the position error, the velocity error, are only dependent on, on within themselves. They're not dependent upon y. So all the y terms are not contributing to it, so we make sure there's zero in this uh, error term matrices. Similarly, y does not depend on x, but y does depend on y. And then this term will be zero again for the x, and this will be then t cubed over 2. Now we follow through with the velocity terms. It does depend on x, not on y. Then this is going to be t times t, t squared. This is 0. y doesn't depend on x, but it does depend on y. So we're getting our sym symmetry in our matrices right here. And this is t squared. So while this matrices may look kind of messy and has like all these different zeros in terms of here, all of this basically doing is saying that, well, x doesn't depend on y, and our error terms is based upon the process. So here's our, here's our coefficients for the process. And so just fill in the matrices accordingly, setting zeros to whenever we're dealing with x and y intersecting. And that's it. That's all we need for this term. And now we can plug in all, all our values, all our covariances, I mean, and all our matrices to look and see how this model does. And I'll implement that in MATLAB in a second. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe.